Hi everyone, I am Dr. Jeeva Thaparan. Today's lecture is on glycolysis. Overview of glucose metabolic pathways. Glucose metabolism either start from glucose or end in glucose. Glucose from the bloodstream enters the cells and immediately converted to glucose 6-phosphate. Glucose 6-phosphate is a metabolic junction metabolite of glucose metabolism. Glucose 6-phosphate is converted to glycogen by glycogenesis. Glycogen converted to glucose 6-phosphate by glycogenolysis. Conversion of glucose 6-phosphate to 5-carbon sugars and NADPH is known as pentose phosphate pathway. Glucose 6-phosphate further by series of reactions in a linear pathway converted to pyruvate via glycolysis. Conversion of pyruvate back to glucose in reverse is known as gluconeogenic pathway. Pyruvate is converted to acetyl-CoA by pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme. Acetyl-CoA further oxidized via TCA cycle in the mitochondria to provide more ATP. Acetyl-CoA also used to synthesize fatty acids, ketone bodies and cholesterol. In anaerobic conditions, Pyruvate is converted to lactate. Glucose oxidation. The end product of glycolysis is pyruvate. Pyruvate in the presence of oxygen enters the mitochondria and converted to acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA further oxidized via TCA cycle to produce ATP, carbon dioxide and water. In the absence of oxygen, Pyruvate undergoes lactate fermentation to produce lactate. Formation of lactate from pyruvate will regenerate NAD+, which is needed in an early step of glycolysis. Regulation of glucose transport. Glucose is transported into cells by glucose transporters known as facilitative glucose transporters. The rate of entry of glucose depends upon number of glucose transporters, affinity of glucose transporters to glucose. Let us discuss about the properties of facilitated glucose transporters. The glucose transporters are categorized into glucose transporter 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Glucose transporter 1 mainly located among the tissues human erythrocyte, blood brain barrier, blood retinal barrier, blood placental barrier and blood testis barrier. It is expressed in cell type with barrier functions. It is a high affinity glucose transport system. Glucose transporter 2 mainly present in liver, kidney, pancreatic beta cell, serosal surface of intestinal mucosa cells, etc. A high capacity low affinity transporter. It may be used as the glucose sensor in the pancreas. Glucose transporter 3, mainly present in brain, is a major transporter in the central nervous system and a high affinity system of glucose transport. Glucose transporter 4, are located in the adipose tissue, skeletal muscle and heart muscles. It is an insulin sensitive transporter. In the presence of insulin, the number of glucose transporter 4 increases on the cell surface and it is a high affinity system of glucose transport. Glucose transporter 5 mainly present in the intestinal epithelium and spermatozoa. This is actually a fructose transporter. The graph shows 
the rate of glucose uptake by different tissues via their specific glucose transporters. Uptake of glucose in the liver and in pancreatic beta cell is proportional to plasma concentration. Uptake in brain is independent of plasma concentration over physiological range. The figure shows glucose transport into muscle and adipose tissue stimulated by insulin. Insulin binds to its receptor in the cell membrane. Activated receptor promotes recruitment of glucose transporters from intracellular pool to cell membrane. Glucose transporters increase insulin-mediated uptake of glucose into cells. When insulin level decreases, glucose transporters move from cell membrane to intracellular storage pool where they can be recycled. The figure shows glucose transport through capillary endothelium in neural and non-neural tissues. In the neural tissue, tight junctions are present between endothelial cells and narrow intracellular space. It lacks phenocytosis and it has continuous basement membrane. Glucose transporters are located in both membranes. In the non-neural tissues, there are no tight junctions. Presence of wide, wide intracellular gaps. Phenocytosis is present. They have discontinuous basement membrane. The glucose can diffuse between cells and into interstitial fluid. Sodium dependent glucose transporters. Glucose is absorbed in the small intestine by a secondary active transport mechanism down the concentration gradient of sodium. Sodium is actively pumped out of the enterocyte on the basolateral side and the resulting low sodium concentration inside the enterocyte drags sodium from the intestinal lumen into the cell through a transport protein but only after glucose has attached itself to the protein. Let us go into the details of glycolysis and its regulation. First, we see the importance of glycolysis. Glycolysis is the preparatory pathway for aerobic oxidation of carbohydrate. And it is the major energy yielding pathway in certain tissues. Examples, RBC, which lacks mitochondria, cornea, lens and region of retina, they lack mitochondria as well as having limited oxygen supply. Kidney medulla, testis, leukocyte and white muscle fibers have relatively few mitochondria. In all these tissues, the glycolysis is the major energy yielding pathway. Glycolysis is an emergency energy yielding pathway under hypoxic conditions. Examples, myocardial infarctions, skeletal muscle during strenuous exercise, during natural birth of human babies, and rapidly growing tumor cells and astrocytes. The intermediates of glycolysis serve as substrate for other metabolic pathways such as triacylglycerol synthesis, synthesis of amino acid and HMP pathway. Galactose, fructose can enter the pathway and metabolize. Overview of glycolysis. Glucose is oxidized to two pyruvate molecules by series of reactions in a linear pathway known as glycolysis. Pyruvate under anaerobic conditions remain in the cytoplasm and is converted to lactate. Lactate enters the cori cycle. 
in the aerobic conditions pyruvate moves from cytoplasm into the mitochondrion and is converted to acetyl coa acetyl coa enters the tca cycle produce more atp glycolysis in summary glycolysis have two phases energy investment phase during this phase two atp molecules are utilized energy pay off phase during this phase four atp molecules two nadph molecules and two pyruvate molecules are produced glycolysis in detail glycolysis occur in two phases in the first phase mostly endogonic reactions are taking place in the second phase mostly exogonic reactions are taking place in the first step of glycolysis glucose is converted to glucose 6 phosphate glucose is trapped inside the cell by adding a negatively charged phosphate group which doesn't allow the glucose molecule to diffuse freely out of the cell conversion of glucose to glucose 6 phosphate is catalyzed by hexokinase in most of the tissues except in the liver and then pancreatic beta cell glucokinase is also involved in the conversion of glucose to glucose 6 phosphate during the conversion of glucose to glucose 6 phosphate one atp molecule is utilized in other words investment of energy is taking place at the first step itself glucose 6 phosphate in the subsequent reaction is converted to fructose 6 phosphate glucose 6 phosphate is an aldose sugar fructose 6 phosphate is a keto sugar so aldose sugar is converted to a keto sugar this reaction is a isomerization reaction catalyzed by phosphoglucose isomerase and subsequently another phosphate group is added to the fructose 6 phosphate This reaction is catalyzed by phosphofructokinase at the expense of an ATP molecule. The phosphoryl group transfer is taking place, and fructose 6 phosphate is converted to fructose 1 sig bisphosphate. The fructose 1 sig bisphosphate indicates the two terminal carbons of this molecule is phosphorylated now. when it is split in the subsequent reaction into two three carbon molecules each three carbon molecules will have one phosphate group aldolase catalyzes in this reaction and resulting in glyceraldehyde three phosphate and dihydroxy acetone phosphate again glyceraldehyde three phosphate is a keto aldose sugar sorry and dihydroxy acetone phosphate is a keto sugar and these two molecules will be in equilibrium and they can be interconverted the reaction is catalyzed by triose phosphate isomerase these two molecules can lead to the formation of two pyruvate if you start from glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate by the action of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is converted to 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate this conversion is an oxidation the removal of hydrogen from the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is accepted by an nad plus and converted to nadh and 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate is the molecule having additional phosphate group in the first carbon here the phosphate group is not supplied by the atp instead it is supplied by the inorganic phosphate thus forming a higher energy compound 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate compared to 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate the 3 phosphoglycerate the product of next reaction is a low energy compound 
So when a high energy compound is converted to a low energy compound, the energy is released. That energy is released to produce an ATP molecule. The ATP formation by this kind of reaction is called substrate level phosphorylation. 3 phosphoglycerate converted to 2 phosphoglycerate by the action of phosphoglycerate mutase and 2 phosphoglycerate in the subsequent reaction converted to phosphoenol pyruvate by an enzyme enolase. 2 phospho phosphoenol pyruvate is converted to 2 pyruvate molecules by the action of pyruvate kinase enzyme. In this reaction also, phosphoenol pyruvate is a high energy compound. When it is converted to a low energy compound, pyruvate energy is released and an ATP molecule is synthesized from the energy released in this reaction. The first four reactions split one six carbon glucose into two to three carbon molecule, two three carbon molecule, I beg your pardon using the energy from two ATPs. The next five reaction produce two molecules of pyruvate, reduce two NAD plus two NADH, and produce four molecules of ATP. The net gain of glycolysis is two ATPs. Aerobic versus anaerobic glycolysis. During glycolysis, Glycerol D3-phosphate, one of the intermediate of glycolytic pathway, converted to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. In this reaction, addition of inorganic phosphate is taking place and glycerol D3-phosphate is oxidized to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. The hydrogen removed from the glycerol D3-phosphate oxidation is accepted by NAD+, and formation of NADH is taking place. NAD plus available in the cell in limited supply. During this reaction, the cellular NAD plus will be depleted. To continue the glycolysis, NAD plus has to be regenerated. In aerobic condition, the regeneration of NAD plus is taking place in the mitochondria via electron transport chain, either using glycerol phosphate shuttle or malate aspartate shuttle. In anaerobic condition, due to prevailing hypoxia, the NAD plus regenerated via electron transport chain is not adequate enough to continue the glycolysis. Alternatively, the cell converts the pyruvate to lactate by the action of lactate dehydrogenase enzyme. During this process, NADH is converted to NAD+, and that NAD+, is recycled in the glycolytic pathway to convert glycerol D3-phosphate to 1,3-bisphosphate. Glycerate. Cells that use glucose conversion to lactic acid to generate ATP. Tissues of the eye. The tissues involved are the cornea, lens, and those parts of the retina that require high visual acuity. The capacity of anaerobic glycolysis in the retina as a whole is high, indicating that and neurobic glycolysis contributes significantly to ATP generation. The glucose is provided and the lactic acid removed by the fluids in the eye, the aqueous and the vitreous humors, so that the flow of these fluids in the eye is important. Cells that use glucose conversion to lactic acid to generate ATP. Kidney medulla. The cortex contains the glomeruli through which the blood is filtered. The proximal tubules and part of the distal tubules from which 
ions and molecules are reabsorbed. The cortex is well supplied with blood so that ATP is generated by the oxidation of fuels. The medulla is metabolically quite different. Here the ATP is required for the reabsorption of ions from the loop of Henle. Some ATP is generated by anaerobic glycolysis since the supply of blood and therefore of oxygen to the medulla is much poorer than to the cortex. This reflects control of the uptake of water and sodium ions into the blood by the countercurrent mechanism. This depends on slow flow of the blood in the capillaries. Cells that use glucose conversion to lactic acid to generate ATP, enterocytes in the small intestine. The conversion of glucose to lactic acid in the enterocytes provides another means of absorbing glucose into the blood. They absorb glucose from the lumen of the intestine and then convert it to the lactic acid, which enters the hepatic portal blood from where it is removed by the liver, which then converts the lactate back to glucose. An advantage of this process is that it slows the entry of glucose into the blood, which minimize the peak of blood sugar levels after a meal. Conditions resulting in lactic acidosis. Conditions, physical ex exercise, anaerobic glycolysis in muscle, severe lung disease, high altitude drowning, impaired respiration, severe anemia, carbon monoxide poisoning, sickling crisis, impaired oxygen delivery, cyanide poisoning, inhibition of oxidative phosphorylation, alcohol intoxication and von Gerg's disease, impaired gluconeogenesis, PDH deficiency, accumulation of pyruvate, leukemia, and metastatic carcinoma and neurobic glycolysis by neoplastic cells. Reactions of glycolysis and their regulation. Glycolysis consists of three irreversible reactions. These reactions are catalyzed by glucokinase or hexokinase, phosphofructokinase 1, and pyruvate kinase. These are regulatory steps of glycolysis. Phosphofructokinase or PFK1 catalyzes the committed step of glycolysis, which is the key regulatory enzyme of glycolysis. Glucokinase regulatory protein inhibits glucokinase which happens in the liver tissue. Glucose 6-phosphate, the end product of hexokinase catalyzed reaction, inhibit hexokinase by feedback inhibition. Phosphofructokinase 1 or phospho PFK1, allosterically inhibited by ATP and citrate and activated by AMP and fructose 2 sig bisphosphate. The enolase enzyme is inhibited by sodium fluoride and the pyruvate kinase is allotrically activated by fructose 1,6 bisphosphate. This is an example for feedforward activation. At the same time, pyruvate kinase is also inhibited by ATP or the energy charge of the cell. This slide shows the summary of mechanism that can regulate the flux through glycolysis. Regulation of glycolysis. Regulation of glucokinase and hexokinase. Humans have three hexokinase with a relatively low Km for glucose. They are half maximally saturated by less than 0.2 millimolar glucose. Humans also produce glucokinase 
also called type 4 exokinase, which has a comparatively high S0.5 for glucose. It is half maximally active at approximately 5 millimolar glucose. Glucose 6-phosphate, the product of the hexokinase catalyzed reaction, inhibits hexokinase. This is variably called product inhibition or feedback inhibition. Differences in the kinetic behavior between hexokinases type 1 to 3 and glucokinase, the hexokinase 4. Glucokinase is found only in the liver and in glucose sensing cells of the pancreas, jejunal enterocytes and hypothalamus. Glucokinase is not inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate. In the liver, the activity of glucokinase is further regulated by a glucokinase regulatory protein that responds to dietary fructose. Regulation of phosphofructokinase 1. The phosphorylation of fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is thus the first irreversible reaction that commits a metabolite to glycolysis. This is committed step of glycolysis. This reaction is catalyzed by phosphofructokinase 1 or PFK1. This enzyme usually exerts the greatest control over the glycolysis. Thus, it is known as key regulatory enzyme of glycolysis. There are several isoenzymes of PFK1. AMP stimulates all of them and ATP inhibits them. Citrate also inhibits PFK1. PFK1 and PFK2. Fructose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate by the action of PFK1. And also, fructose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 2,6-bisphosphate by the action of the enzyme PFK2. Phosphofructokinase 2. PFK2 is a bifunctional enzyme on phosphorylated form having kinase activity, phosphorylated form having phosphatase activity. Regulation of phosphofructokinase 1 by fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. Fructose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate by the action of PFK1 enzyme. At the same time, fructose 6-phosphate is also converted to fructose 2,6-bisphosphate by the action of the bifunctional enzyme PFK2. Fructose 2,6-bisphosphate allosterically activate phosphofructokinase 1 and control the flux of the glycolyte pathway. Regulation of pyruvate kinase. The rate of pyruvate kinase catalyzed reaction is regulated allosterically by the concentration of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate so that the concentration of intermediates in glycolysis stays approximately constant regardless of the flux. The activation of pyruvate kinase by fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is an example of feedforward activation. In the liver and kidneys, hormone-induced phosphorylation inactivates pyruvate kinase. Energy transport in the cytosol, creatine phosphocreatine shuttle. In some muscles, some of the mitochondria are present just beneath the plasma membrane. The localization of some of the mitochondria has the advantage of minimizing the distance that oxygen has to diffuse from the capillaries across the plasma membrane to the mitochondria. But the disadvantage of increasing diffusion distance of ADP from myofibrils to the mitochondria. Creatine phosphate shuttle help to transfer the energy formed in the form of ATP in the mitochondria to the 
myofibril as shown in the diagram. In spermatozoa, mitochondria are present in the midpiece just below the head. ATP is required for the movement of the flagellum which enables the sperm to swim. Creatine phosphate shuttle helps to transfer the energy produced by the mitochondria to the flagellum as shown in the diagram. Tissue specific regulation of glycolysis. Regulation of glycolysis in red blood cells. Hexokinase produces a near constant concentration of glucose 6-phosphate which is needed both for glycolysis and for the production of NADPH. Glucose transporter 1 are always in the plasma membrane and equilibrate intracellular and extracellular glucose. Phosphofructokinase 1 regulates flux through glycolysis based on the concentration of AMP and ATP. When the ATP level is high, PFK1 is inhibited. When the AMP level is high, PFK1 is activated. Fructose 1,6-bis bisphosphate feed forward activates pyruvate kinase. Pyruvate kinase also regulated by ATP levels. When the ATP levels increases, pyruvate kinase is inhibited. Production of 2,3 bisphosphoglycerate in red blood cells. In glycolysis, one of the intermediate 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate in red blood cells by the action of bisphosphoglycerate mutase enzyme converted to 2,3 bisphosphoglycerate or 2,3 PBG. This is again reconverted back to 3 phosphoglycerate by bisphosphoglycerate phosphatase and subsequently 3 phosphoglycerate continue with the glycolyte pathway. Regulation of glycolysis in skeletal muscle. The gastronomous muscle, for instance, contain mostly fibers that perform anaerobic glycolysis. The soleus muscle, on the other hand, contains mostly fibers that oxidize substrate to carbon dioxide. Both muscles extend the food. The gastronomius is used mainly for high force, short duration activities. And the soleus is used mainly for maintaining the posture. Regulation of glycolysis in skeletal muscle. Glycolytic fibers are fast twitch fibers that contain only a few mitochondria. They can contract and deliver full force in less than 0.1 seconds. Glycolytic fibers produce and release lactic acid. Oxidative fibers, the majority of fibers in the soleus muscle, are slow twitch fibers that have abundant mitochondria and continuously need to import oxygen. However, increased oxygen delivery depends on an increased blood flow. Oxidative fibers also use fatty acids and ketone bodies for generation of energy. Regulation of glycolysis in skeletal muscle. In response to exercise or insulin, the main glucose transporter in skeletal muscle, glucose transporter 4, moves from intracellular vesicle to the plasma membrane. Exercise increases the concentration of AMP, which in turn activate PFK1 and AMP-dependent kinase. AMP dependent kinase favors the translocation of glucose transporter 4 to the plasma membrane. In skeletal muscle, high concentration of fructose 6-phosphate activate the kinase and inhibit the phosphatase, thereby increasing the concentration of fructose 2-6-bisphosphate and activating glycolysis. Regulation of glycolysis in the liver. Regulation of glucokinase by glucokinase regulatory protein. Liver expresses glucokinase 
and glucokinase regulatory protein. Glucose 6-phosphate does not inhibit glucokinase. Glucokinase regulatory protein binds to glucokinase and inhibits it and induces its translocation to the nucleus. Mutations of glucokinase are the cause of maturity onset diabetes in young or modi. Regulation of glucokinase by glucokinase regulatory protein. Regulation is achieved by reversible binding to the hepatic protein glucokinase regulatory protein. In the presence of fructose 6-phosphate, glucokinase binds tightly to the GKRP and it is translocated to the nucleus, thereby rendering the enzyme inactive. When glucose levels in the blood and also in the hepatocyte as a result of glucose transporter 2 increase, glucokinase is released from the GKRP and the enzyme re-enters the cytosol where it phosphorylates glucose to glucose 6 phosphate. Regulation of PFK1 in the liver. The liver, liver isoenzyme contains a phosphorylation site near the amino terminal that decreases the activity of the kinase and increases the phosphatase activity. This site is phosphorylated by cyclic AMB dependent protein kinase and is responsible for decreased level of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate during fasting condition. PFK2 can also regulate it through phosphorylation by serine threonine protein kinases. Hormonal control of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate levels and glycolysis in the liver. Glucagon binds to glucagon receptor. Epinephrine binds to beta adrenergic receptor. Binding of these two hormones to their receptors activate adenylate cyclase via G protein. Activated adenylate cyclase convert the ATP to cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP activate protein kinase A. Protein kinase A phosphorylate the bifunctional enzyme PFK2. By phosphorylation, kinase activity will be inhibited and phosphatase activity will be activated. The active phosphatase action on fructose 2 6 bisphosphate decreases its level and inhibits glycolysis. Regulation of glycolysis in heart muscle. In the aerobic heart, the major fuel is utilized by the heart is fatty acids. Fatty acids undergo beta oxidation and produces acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA enters the TCA cycle to produce ATP. At the same time, glucose also can be oxidized to pyruvate via aerobic glycolysis and subsequently pyruvate converted to acetyl-CoA by pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme. Acetyl-CoA enters the TCA cycle and produces ATP. This ATP will be utilized for contractile function and basal metabolism of heart muscle. In the ischemic heart, oxygen supply is low. Fatty acid cannot be utilized as energy source. So the blood levels of fatty acid increases. Fatty acid oxidation decreases. The level of acetyl-CoA decreases. The ATP productions via acetyl-CoA oxidation decreases. Ischemic heart can use glucose as energy source via anaerobic glycolysis. Glucose first converted to pyruvate. Pyruvate cannot be oxidized via TCA cycle due to hypoxic condition. So the glucose oxidation via the TCA cycle decreases. The glucose which is converted to pyruvate, the pyruvate will be converted to lactate and the lactate will accumulate. The ATP produced by the anaerobic glycolysis will be the only source of ATP available for the
contractile functions and the basal metabolism of the ischemic heart. Regulation of glycolysis in heart muscle. The heart can use fatty acids, glucose, lactate and ketone bodies for ATP production. At rest in the fasting state or after a high fat low carbohydrate meal, the heart uses almost no glucose and produces its ATP mostly from beta oxidation of fatty acids. The heart substantially increases its use of glucose after high carbohydrate meal during exercise or high workload and during hypoxia. Whereby insulin, epinephrine, AMP and AMP dependent protein kinase are regulated. Regulation of glycolysis in heart muscle. Insulin and active AMP dependent protein kinase can each induce the insertion of GLUT4 glucose transported in the cardiomyocyte plasma membrane. AMB directly activate PFK1, the main rate limiting enzyme of glycolysis. AMB also activate AMP kinase. Insulin, epinephrine, and AMPK each increase phosphofructokinase 2 activity, which leads to increase in the concentration of fructose 2 sig bisphosphate, which turns activate PFK1 and increases the glycolysis. The cardiac isoenzyme PFK2 contains a phosphorylation site near the carboxy terminal that can be phosphorylated in response to adrenergic activities, activators of contraction such as no epinephrine and by increased AMP levels. Phosphorylation at this site increases the kinase activity and increases the fructose 2 sig bisphosphate level thereby contributing to the activation of glycolysis. The hormonal regulation of glycolysis in heart muscle is mainly brought by epinephrine. Epinephrine binds to beta adrenergic receptor which activate adenylate cyclase and it converts the ATP to cyclic AMB and cyclic AMB activate the protein kinase A. Protein kinase A by phosphorylating the bifunctional enzyme increases the fructose 2 sig bisphosphate level and increases the rate of glycolysis. Glycolysis in neurons. Major sites for the control of glycolytic fluxes HK PFK and PK. HK is inhibited by its product glucose 6-phosphate. PFK1 inhibited by ATP and citrate activated by AMP and fructose 2 sig bisphosphate. Fructose 2 sig bisphosphate produced by an enzymatic reaction catalyzed by PFK2. It is known as PFKB in brain. PF PFKB3 is the main isoform expressed in the brain, which is constantly degraded by ubiquitin mediated mechanism. Therefore, glycolysis in neurons not activated. Regulation of glycolysis in adipocytes. When the concentration of insulin is elevated after a mixed meal, Adipocytes increase their glucose uptake and deposit fatty acids as triglycerides. An elevated concentration of insulin leads to translocation of GLUT4 glucose transporters from intracellular storage vesicle to the plasma membrane. At the same time, the lipoprotein lipase activity in blood vessels of the adipose tissue increases which brings about an influx of fatty acids. By a glycolysis and a side reaction to it, glucose is converted to glycerol 3-phosphate, which is esterified with fatty acid to form triglyceride. The figure shows the differences in regulation of PFK1 in different tissues. The first diagram is Regulation of cardiac isoenzyme. 
the hormones involved are adrenaline and insulin the second diagram shows the regulation of liver isoenzyme the third diagram shows the regulation of skeletal muscle isoenzyme regulation of pyruvate kinase pyruvate kinase regulation in all the black olive tissues is by allosteric mechanism fructose 1,6 bisphosphate allosterically activate pyruvate kinase enzyme ATP acetyl CoA and long chain fatty acids inhibit pyruvate kinase enzyme allosterically in the liver pyruvate kinase exists in two forms dephosphorylated pyruvate kinase and phosphorylated pyruvate kinase the dephosphorylated pyruvate kinase is active and phosphorylated kinase is inactive during fasting in the liver by the action of glucagon protein kinase a will be activated protein kinase a converts dephosphorylated pyruvate kinase to phosphorylated pyruvate kinase and make it inactive protein phosphatase enzyme converts pyruvate kinase inactive form to pyruvate kinase active form by dephosphorylating the pyruvate kinase inactive form protein phosphatase enzyme is stimulated by insulin therefore during fat condition pyruvate kinase will be dephosphorylated and active during fasting condition pyruvate kinase will be phosphorylated and inactive thank you